You are now watching the Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. I'm Zach Lesage, and today we're gonna be going over my personal top 10 decks in the month of January 2021. So these are the decks that have been tearing up tournaments all throughout December, the first couple weeks of January, or just basically before the time of creation of this video. Um, these are decks based off of just kind of how the metagame's generally shaken up. So, I mean, I might be off by a week or two in terms of where the metagame might actually be, but feel free to use this as a timepiece to be like, these were the best decks in order by one of the players who's playing at one of the most utmost competitive, competitive levels during this time. Um, if you're missing for any of the cards in this deck, head over to uh, ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5, save 5% on your next order of codes. All the decks are in the description below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button right here. I mean, let's let's jump over the decks, let's jump into number 10 and see what made this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Colossal VMAX, which is actually probably my favorite deck in format right now. It's placed this low because my testing group of Gabriel Smart and Michelle Babin are really the only ones who are playing this deck alongside with myself. Um, in the past week of the recording of this video, I was able to get four straight top cuts with it at uh, both chill $300 events. Um, Michelle did very well. Gabe got some top cut as well. Um, I mean, it, it it's pr has proven success in the past week, which is why it's placed so low on this list. Now... The reason why this deck works in this format is because it has a favorable matchup, if not um, extremely favorable matchup against Picarom, Eternatus, it holds its own against ADP, it wins against Baby Blacephalon, Chrysephalon, Fire Toolbox, all those kind of decks, really only struggling with Luke Metal and kind of Decidueye decks. Um, Colossal has its built-in acceleration, you can stack your deck with a Rangaroo and Rotom Phone, Kind of making this deck fairly consistent for best of one um as long as this deck gets a bit of traction beneath it or if the format doesn't hate it out i could true totally see this deck rising over the next month even within the next few weeks especially as the list gets more and more refined so this is my personal list for the deck i think this deck is absolutely amazing and i totally recommend that you should give it a try too our current standard format has been incredibly boring for the past few months because Vivid Voltage hasn't really added too much, but it did add Colossal VMAX. And I mean, with Shiny Fates not really adding much into the format, I think this deck and the general meta is going to remain main, mostly the same. Um, I will work on the Sun of Scorch VMAX matchup for this deck, as Sun of Scorch VMAX does rise in popularity. So stay tuned for updates on the Colossal VMAX deck. But I mean, I think it's a pretty safe number 10 bet here. And if anything, it's probably placed a little bit low on this list. In our number 9 spot, we're sliding through with Retroam and Charizard GX. This deck over the past few weeks has popped up kind of out of nowhere. Um, Simone trottier Lacasse basically played this deck to a Hexter event, and it kind of blew up since then. Players have modified it. This is my modified version of the deck. And like all the other decks, you can check it out in the description below. It's one of those things where... I think that this deck's good. Tag teams are good in general. You got a lot of option when there's options. There's paths for success. Um, do I think that this deck could be maybe cut a couple fires, add in fire crystals? Yes. I think this is one of those decks where if you're a newer player to the game, I actually recommend these decks because it allows you to kind of have a bunch of different chess pieces against situations and you can choose your Pokemon carefully, kind of building your deck as you go along. And on top of that, if you don't have, like, all the cards to build a deck, you could always replace the Cramorant V with, like, a Double V. Or you could replace a Victini V with an extra Volcanion. And it wouldn't affect it too, too much. Um, most of this deck is fairly inexpensive to build. Um, especially, like, the trainer portion of it. I mean, I think that's mostly common cards. So I think this is a really good one where this, this deck will continue to grow with each new available set. You could always add in a, like, new Fire-type attacker or an energy Pokemon that takes colorless energies. There's a lot of options with this deck. It's generally fun to play. Sure, it might come at the cost of consistency a little bit, but it's really one of those things where I, I just see the deck as strong. It has options against the current meta. You could always build it to do better against the current meta than it currently is right now. 
but this is just my build um this is very similar to a deck that i came second with at the australia international championships in february 2020 which is a ability zard um this doesn't play nine tails and instead of playing nine tails it plays a bunch of kind of different tech pokemon um, i even played the mega low punny back then it's just a really good card in general so i mean i think this deck's awesome will it fall off the face of the map for the february 2021 decks probably yeah i i don't see this deck keeping up um there's also the chrysephalon version of this deck which i mean is likely better andrew hedrick and his group um have been playing that deck and been doing incredibly well with it um this deck kind of seems like it's fallen into the limelight a little bit but i mean this deck does have overall stronger positions or stronger tournament finishes so that's why i ranked it at number nine but we'll see exactly what makes the top 10 list next month jumping into our number eight spot we have mad party which is absolutely crazy to me um, a lot of the success from this deck is riding from daniel altavilla's early success with this deck i mean he's really been the one who's pushed this deck this far and to me i think it's just like this is a tier two tier three deck but it does have the accomplishments to back itself up at this point um do i think that this deck could fall off in the future yeah 100 i do i think that this is a type of deck where um you run really hot you don't really have a great answer against adp the deck just is missing something will we get, see that something in a future set yeah probably um this set this deck is going to be good for a few years and i think it's going to be one of those things where the deck might become one of the best decks in format in the future i definitely can see that happening right now i feel like it's just missing a few screws to truly be higher up in this list and it's just barely hanging on at one of these bottom spots i i mean i think danny's put in a lot of work there's a lot of cool things in here like the giovanni's exile very cute ways to get around this deck's weaknesses it, it's just one of those things where I, I just don't think it has enough proven success right now to be considered a true contender in this format um or even breaking into the top five decks but we'll see maybe the deck will just have a breakout month and we'll see it higher up in the list if you're like i mean i love playing mad party i think it's super fun but fun is probably the correct word to describe this deck it's more of a budget deck than it is competitive deck um just because a lot of the pokemon in this deck are fairly cheap beyond a den hgx and crowbat b so i mean I don't know it's one of those things where i i played it at one major event i did very poorly at that major event um i i thought going into that event that there would be issues and it's just one of those things where i haven't really found a way to solve those issues right yet um maybe if mewtwo and mew gx comes back out once battle styles comes out um to kind of counter the urshifu decks this is probably a really good choice then because you can counter um a bunch of psychic weak pokemon but again it's one of those things I, I think it's missing a little bit of something you're only running the seven energies uh your hp is extremely low adp is still a looming issue um we got to see exactly how the format goes so just kind of hold out on this one um but if you like mad party feel free to give this deck a whirl danny's put a lot of effort into this deck um so i mean it's not going to be bad at all we're finally in that number seven spot for me, it's one of those things where Eternatus VMAX is probably placed a little bit low, but this version of the deck has not necessarily got as many accomplishments as the Poison Eternatus, nor do I think it's as strong as the Poison Eternatus that's placed much higher up on this list. Um, this deck basically focuses on getting a bunch of Eternatus VMAX out in play, dark Pokemon in play, doing extra damage with Zigzagoon, and just manually attaching your energies to use Dread Ends. You got Power Plant, Reset Stamp, and Marnie. Um, kind of as consist or kind of cards that can hurt your opponent's consistency, um, which are all going to be extremely helpful to just kind of stop your opponent in whatever they're doing. Do I think this deck is great? Yeah, I actually think this deck is amazing. It would be a great deck for a newer player to pick up in the game um, and actually have a good chance of just beating a lot of top players. This deck boasts a handful of good matchups, but it does struggle to crushing hammer, team yell, grunt. And, I mean, I, I just think it's not a perfect deck. We just don't have enough dark Pokemon for Eternatus VMAX to necessarily be popping off, um, especially in this capacity. I do really like the Poison version. I don't want to talk about too much about it because we will see it later on this list. But, I mean, this deck should be super consistent, super easy to play. Just doing a lot of damage with Eternatus VMAX. If you think this version's better than the Eternatus VMAX with Poison, uh, let me know in the comments below. Or if there's another Eternatus version that I haven't seen or heard of, feel free to let me know. I mean, 
this is a deck that I think will definitely be fluid in its kind of playtime in Pokemon. It's one of those things where the deck will do well, the deck will sit back, the deck will pop off. Would I be surprised to see this in the top five decks next month? Not at all. Um, and we'll see exactly how it goes. We just gotta gotta wait it out, see how the metagame progresses, and check it out from there. Here we have it. We got Sun and Scorch coming in hot at number six. This is a deck that um, after this past week of uh, PTCGO play, this deck is probably placed a little bit too low on my list, but I had to go through what we had happen in December and within the first week of January in order to make this video. Um, it's one of those things where if, if I just put everything that happened up to date, this video would have to get updated on a daily basis. And it's really just more of a monthly video to give you a kind of a snapshot in the meta. Sun and Scorch VMAX is coming in strong because it's a welder based deck that you could attach a lot of energies to um, and just do a lot of damage with Sun and Scorch VMAX. There's a few tech Pokemon like Rush Ram and Charizard GX, which is really for tag team Pokemon. You kind of roll your opponent with that card. Um, Gyratina, I like there's, that there's a lot of options here, like the Gyratina, the Fion, the Zigzagoon, the Volcanion. Um, so those are all strong. I should give a shout out to Cashman and Thomas Brophy. They've really refined this list. I know they get a lot of a little bit of uh, flack online for being Senna Scorch players. I think Senna Scorch is a fine deck. I played Senna Scorch to a 7-0 um, record at the Players' Cup 2 quals for North North America that allowed me to go on to win the Players' Cup 2. So, I mean, I definitely recognize Sun of Scorch VMAX back in Darkness of Blaze formats. Do I think it's the strongest deck in format? Probably not. Well, their decks are a little bit inconsistent at their core, but when they do work, they do win tournaments, and that's what Cash and Thomas have been doing. Um, so, if you're looking for have a tournament kind of ready, super refined deck, this is really where it's at. Um, I know that we've seen the Cell Valley version come out with Pedro Torres playing it over the past week or so. I think that this is probably the better version right now. I haven't got a chance to really test out the other version yet. But I mean, I think that this deck's super cool. Just kind of building up energies, self-accelerating with the Sun of Scorch VMAX, using Welder to continuously draw more and more cards. This deck's going to stay around for a significant amount of time, or at or at least until there's a water deck that kind of hates it out of the format. But usually Sun of Scorch will find a way, or Welder decks in general will find a way to kind of mitigate their weakness. Looking over the halfway point of this video, we got Blacephalon coming in hot at number five. So back to back fire decks, we saw Sun of Scorch last slide. Now we're at Blacephalon. I mean, Blacephalon's been around since it came out in Unbroken Bonds. I mean, I played that card. Um, as a single prize card version too, I played it at uh, the Origin Special Events to a 17th place finish. I brought it to NAIC, brought it to a top 128 finish. I mean, not the greatest accomplishments, but I mean, I've been playing Blacephalon since day one. And then, I mean, it being successful nowadays, especially after you cut Fiery Flint out of the deck, cards like Victini. Um, I mean, it still makes sense that it's doing hot because there's still a lot of options. We see that Fire Crystal exists in the format, Giant Hearth, all the fire energies. I just think even with a text of Rush Ram Charizard GX, which we saw in Hugo Lapp's deck for the Players' Cup 2, top 4, it's one of those things where it's just strong being able to run over your opponents over and over again. This deck, similar to Senna Scorch that we saw, has a lot of the same text with the Crobat, Zigzagoon, Reshazar, Dedenne, um, Jirachis, um, Welders. Like, a lot of the cards are very similar. Um, this is just a single prize card version. Um, for all of you who are balling out on a budget, this was featured as the best budget deck that I had in my last video. So no surprise to see it making it all the way at the top five. Uh, this deck's fairly inexpensive to put together online, just trading for some cards or in real life. So, I mean, I totally recommend giving it a try if you're uh, looking for a little bit of a cheaper alternative to some of the more heavy hitting decks. But I mean, Blacephalon being able to do a lot of damage with Fireball Circus is really the main drawing point of this deck. Um, it will always be good with VMAXs coming out or even new mechanics as they come out until this card gets rotated because you could always do an extra 50 damage by discarding an extra energy. Um, but other Pokemon such as Reshiram and Charizard GX, you could see can't get over that 230 HP hurdle with Flare Strike. So it's not like you could always add an extra energy to do more damage. I mean, Rush's art is very good in its own right, but just using an example within the same deck, Fireball Circus, you could always add an extra fire energy to do more damage. And that's why it's seen so much success throughout these formats, is that it can always adapt to the current metagame and ex kind of explore 
what's going on, change up how many fire energies you need to discard so that you could always do the right amount of damage for a knockout. So, I mean, I think that's super strong in itself, and I highly recommend that you give this deck a try. This is likely the best Welder deck we have in format. Here we are landing within the first of the top four deck lists that are featured in this video. Um, coming in strong with kind of another old favorite, Lucario Mail Metalization. I think that this deck is super cool. Um, it's probably placed a little bit too high in this video with all the fire decks that have really been seeing success over the past week. But it's always been a strong contender in our formats. And at the time of creation um, of this video, we're getting all the details together for this video. I did have to include that Lucario Mel Metal has done really well at a lot of the online events. And this is where my personal placement was maybe about a week ago. Um, next video, it might be a little bit lower place, so don't be too surprised if you're a Luke Metal fan. But it's one of those things. Um, I think nowadays you could probably forego the coding metal energies in the deck. Fire decks are just too strong. It probably turns the matchup super unfavorable, but if the matchup's already unfavorable, it, I don't think you can necessarily bring it too much into your favor. I'm sure um, some of you will have some remarks on that. But for me personally, I just think that Coding Metal Energy might be a better space. But let me know what you think in the comments below. This deck really works on discarding your energies or your opponent's energies by using Full Metal Wall GX and Crushing Hammer. And then you just kind of stay alive by reducing damage. Full Metal Wall GX reduces your opponent's damage by 30 for the rest of the game. You got Metal Goggles, Malo Lana, and you just kind of like use Zacian V as a consistency crutch slash attacker and try to survive the game out. Zamazenta V itself can kind of handle your opponent's decks, um, especially if they're playing VMAX Pokemon. So things like Colossal, things such as Eternatus. Um, Zamazenta V can hold its own in this format. That's why it's still included in the deck. But looking over, it's a pretty basic deck, um, just super consistent, meant to get set up. And it's one of those things, we'll see exactly how this deck goes for next month. But right now, I think that Zacian Lucario Mel Metals, a pretty solid choice. Again, just dodge those fire type decks. Um, if fire type decks die down, usually this deck tends to do a little bit better. We finally made it to our top three decks, peep. And in this spot, we have ADP with Zacian V. This is one of those decks where a lot of players have kind of lobbied for this deck or the ADP card to get banned, but I don't necessarily think it's that big of a problem considering it's not winning as many tournaments. Sure, Altered Creation GX is a gatekeeper in the format. I don't think anyone's going to deny that. Doing an extra 30 damage and an extra prize card for each knockout that you take, but there's a lot of decks that just naturally beat this deck and this deck kind of gets hated out of the formats. This version is meant to be super consistent with the four copies of Zacian V. You're allowed to get around Des Decidueye Obstagoon with Age of Slash V. And, I mean, Leon and Galarian Zigzagoon allow you to hit for some larger numbers that otherwise weren't possible. This deck has extra consistency cards like Cherish Ball, an extra copy of Great Catcher, just to really boost things up along with an extra copy of Metal Energy. There's really not too much that can be said about ADP that hasn't been said before. But this, this deck's just meant to be su super consistent with the copies of the Dene, Crobat, drawing cards. Basically, a turn that you're playing boss's orders or professor researching into a great catcher is usually an amazing turn. And this deck is built to go and use Alter Creation on the first turn of the game if you're going second. However, going first isn't bad either. It's really a toss-up. Um, so I would experiment with it a little bit. But this is absolutely the best ADP deck that I've seen in Standard right now. Um, I put a lot of effort, time, soul, uh, blood, everything into this deck in order to get it to this kind of level. I mean, is it anything special? No, not at all. It's one of those things where this deck looks as vanilla as possible. This might as well be a league battle deck or a theme deck, but that's just how super smooth it is. Feel free to give this deck a whirl, especially if you're an ADP lover, or if you just want to know what all the hate's about, but number three spot, ADP, absolutely crushing it at the top tables of a lot of these in a controversial pick for my number two spot, I have chose Eternatus Poison. Now, you might be like, Zach, you're absolutely crazy. Why did you put Eternatus Plants so low and Eternatus Poison so high? Um, I've been observing this deck for a long time. I haven't really played it too much in tournaments, but this version of the deck seems to have more options versus the general metagame, whereas this deck can get past Desi Goons sometimes. I mean, they can play Aromatic Grass Energy, but... This does have somewhat of a chance against a deck, especially if they don't. This deck has answers against Lucario Melmetal, where the other version does not. This version can hit higher numbers to knock out Scorch, 
etc etc the other version does not there's just so much that's going for this deck and sure i've heard people that call this deck a pile they call it brick tornadus this deck is really it makes finals a bunch like literally look on the play limitless website and tell me when this deck is doing really bad it's normally within the top of the meta game only a handful of players have been playing this deck so it's really not seeing the meta share that it probably deserves but this deck is honestly amazing and as long as you're able just to set up it's fairly easy to play you got to watch out if slow row v getting it in the active got to watch out for that stadium spot for dark city but i mean it's definitely one of those things where this deck has what it takes to be one of the best decks in the formats um, this deck is probably going to be a little bit lower on the list next time. A lot of people do not respect this deck, um, and it's probably going to get hated out of the format when Battle Styles comes out. I mean, the main cards out of the set are big fighting type Pokemon. I've been on a tear with Colossal VMAX already, so I mean, a lot of other players are going to catch on to that as well. Um, but the reason why I'm playing Colossal VMAX is because this deck, Eternatus and Picarum, are so strong already. So, I mean, if you're looking for an Eternatus deck to run, give this deck a whirl. I wouldn't mind see, uh, seeing an extra copy of Marty in this deck, maybe even cutting a boss's orders for it. But beyond that, everything else is absolutely fine. I have no problems with this deck. I think it's absolutely amazing. And if you've watched all the way up until this point, not only do you deserve a reward, you get to see what the number one deck is, in my opinion. Um, Pikachu and Zekrom GX really popped off by doing well at a lot of the large chill tcg events it's done well at a lot of the major events that we've seen the hegster events a lot of these events that are hitting like upwards of 200 players and out of all the major 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 events that we've seen in format picarom has won if not all of them most of them i really kind of championed this deck with my testing group after winning the Players' Cup 2 with it, and a lot of players have just kind of taken onto this list, maybe adding in a Bickavold if they're worried about Mad Party, maybe playing an extra Bolton, maybe playing a Team Yell. Um, this deck, this version of the deck is what I'd consider the perfect base list, um, and I think it's worthwhile to play in any particular metagame. This deck just has a lot of answers by copying um, attacks with Mewtwo and Mew GX, if and you could also just do Full Blitz, Tag Bolt GX, Tandem Shock. You have a lot of outs, and when a deck has this many options, usually you can always find yourself out of a hole, um, especially if you're having some tough times in a game. Um, Speed Lightning, Boltons, all the Denetes, everything makes this deck super consistent. So in best of one, it definitely allows you to kind of bridge the gap over a lot of matchups. Like, this deck does well against Send a Scorch. This deck does well against ADP. This deck can do well against Eternatus. This deck can do well against Luke Metal. Like, you don't go against any deck and be like, okay, this matchup's terrible. Maybe beyond Colossal, but Colossal is literally meant just like to beat other decks. This deck is meant to just clearly be the best deck in formats. It's been the best deck in format for a while now. And I totally don't see that changing for the foreseeable future. Let me know what you think about this choice in the comments below. But I truly think it's just the best deck that we have right now. And there's no point of just like trying to change that up. Um, I've seen a lot of success with this deck. A lot of players have seen a lot of success with this deck. It's just clearly super strong. Especially with the disruption cards of Boss's Orders, Crushing Hammer, Reset Stamp, Marnie, Chaotic Swell, and Tandem Shock. You can often win games, and it feels like this is the only deck that really has a true comeback potential, beyond just trying to reset stamp your opponent out of nowhere. And just like that, we've covered the absolute top 10 decks in format for January 2021. Really appreciate everyone watching this video up until this point. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button right there. And again, we have all the decks below in the description. There you can use code P or ZLASSAGE5 at ptcgeostore.com to save 5% on your next order of codes. There's other sponsors down there too, so feel free to check out their websites and links. I mean, until next time, I'm going to be creating more content, really just trying to push myself and push this channel into PTCG superstardom as best as I possibly can. We're on a road to 1,000 subs, and I mean, I'm hoping that we can smash that. Anyways, I'm going to head out, but have yourself a great one. Have a great day. Really hope that you enjoyed watching that video. I totally enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video. Share the video with everyone that you know, and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. We got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks, and have yourself a great one.